Discover the evidence. It's everywhere. Dr. Linda Sager created and defined the job of Hollywood script consultant. In addition to writing several books, she's consulted on film and television scripts for most of the major networks and studios. And she has a doctorate in drama and theology. In fact, I have her latest book here in front of me, Making a Good Writer Great, a Creativity Workbook for Screenwriters. Linda, a delight to have you here on The Evidence. Now, a wonderful book. What's the answer? How do you make a good writer great? Great writing is a combination of three things. One is your art, okay. which is your own particular perspective, your unique voice, your originality, you know, those special stories. All right. One is how do you craft it, once you know the story you want to tell. All right. And the third is what do you know about your creative process? Do you have what we might call control over your creative process so that you can keep it going and not just saying, well, if it comes to me, it comes to me. Creative people, know how to make their creative process Is work. Hollywood a place filled with great writers? No, Hollywood is filled with a lot of competent writers, a few great ones and a few terrible ones, yeah. like any other job I in the world. I suppose you're right. Let me move, Linda, right to the bottom line. What is the definition of inspiration? I think inspiration is when the spirit works through us and moves it to a point of illumination. It's the aha, it's the eureka, it's the I got it, I figured it out. Okay. It's that moment when we see something that's unique and original and truthful and wonderful. Uh, talking about spirituality and creativity, where, where is the interface in that? What is it that makes creativity a spiritual exercise or reality? I think that what happens when we create is that many times we say it's a mystery. We don't know what's happening. Something is flowing through us mm -hmm. and it comes out and it's unconscious. And you have this marvelous flow and this marvelous energy. And I think there's something about that that mm -hmm. is just simply spiritual. And I also think it's spiritual because when we are creating, we are trying to tell the truth. We are trying to get back to what the human condition is about, what are our lives about, what mm -hmm. is the meaning of life, and how are we going to get that through. What about this transcendent? If art is a God thing, the transcendent is all around us. In, in art itself, in film, in the industry, is the transcendent there? Is it something that just uh, is emerging more and more in American uh, filmmaking? This is an interesting thing about that word transcendent because religious people in film are always saying, where is the transcendence in film? I don't think that it's about looking for the transcendent in film. I think it's about looking for the imminence, the imminent spirit, the spirit within and between people. Transcendent meaning this, this out there God. Yes. Uh, instead of looking for that, looking for it. Because the transcendent becomes very abstract. And people say, well, you know, how are we going to show it? And suddenly you have all this preachiness. What I want to look for in film is where do I see something of God and of spirit happening in that story between the characters? Where do I see transformation? Where do I see goodness? Where do I see justice? Where do I see integrity? And if I believe that those things are all part of God, then when they happen in a movie, mm -hmm. I say that's a manifestation or an expression of God's work and God's love and God's kindness. I get the impression you're looking for God everywhere. You bet I am, and I find Are God everywhere. Are you finding everywhere. Him everywhere? I find God everywhere, yeah. too. But what fascinates me in film is how many films are so interested in evil. And you know, evil, is pre after a while, gets pretty one-dimensional. When was mm. the last great villain you saw? I find most of them pretty boring after a while. I think explosions are not point. all interesting. interesting. What I'm fascinated in films is where is goodness and kindness? And I think goodness is very dramatically interesting. Now, you, you've been, your, your doctorate is in theology. Yes. So you live with the Genesis story of creation. Mm -hmm. How does the, the human mind interface with that creation story? How can the sacred act become a part of, of, of my day-to-day -day survival. Well, one of the things in the Genesis story is they talk about that the spirit was upon the face of the deep and it was formless. Yes. They don't use the word chaos. Sometimes we think that creativity begins with chaos. I think it be begins with formlessness. That's an interesting thought. In that we are going through a process to take us from that sense of everything being vague and amorphous mm -hmm. and we are trying to give it form just like God 
you know, created the trees and everything and gave form. Mm -hmm. And that creation story, I think, is, is a wonderful one to keep us in touch with part of the process. But I have two other favorite creation stories really? in the Bible. My next favorite is Proverbs 8. But what I love in that creation story is that creation is delightful. It's a joy, and we delight in what we make. And my feeling is that people are not delighting, are not finding joy in their creation. They need to look again. They need to look at what, what's going on. And my other favorite creation story mm -hmm. is Job 38. Job 38. Because God says, I created the world and I created all this huge thing and then I set the boundaries. Right. And the boundaries were, you know, the, sh the sea will come just this far up on the shore. Uh -huh. And what I get from Job 38 is this idea that part of creativity is being very expansive. Part of creativity is knowing where the boundaries are. Some people don't know boundaries and they become socially irresponsible. Some people don't know expanse and they, they don't want to go into dark places. They mm -hmm. don't want to go into mm -hmm. struggle. They want it all to be just real nice and appropriate. And there you're missing yeah. the other part of creation. So you're always in balance. Now, source of creativity. Where does it all come from? My feeling is the source of creativity is the spirit, is God, that because our world was made to be creative, and we just have to look around to see the vast mm -hmm. amount of creativity, that that creator who made the world also made us and planted in us that ability to be individual, to do something unique and wonderful. Linda Sager, what a book. Making a Good Writer Great, a Creativity Workbook. Thank you for sharing with us about your creativity and the journey with God. What do you think? Art and inspiration, is it a God thing? We'd like to know your opinion. You can find out more about our guests as well on our The Evidence website. It's www.theevidence.org. We'll be back in just a moment with some concluding thoughts. Looking for more? You can discover more evidence. Our complimentary newsletter featuring more stories, more insights, and more in-depth looks into the lives of the guests seen on this program. To receive more evidence, call 1-866-509-1234. Or you may write to Post Office Box 1000, Thousand Oaks, California, 91359. There's an interesting perspective on nature that comes to us from the Psalms of the Bible. The Hebrew poets saw nature as a non-stop performance that inspired applause. They pictured God stretching out the heavens like a canopy, clothing meadows with flocks and valleys with grain, filling the broad sea with swarms of animals, great and small. The psalmist enthusiastically celebrated the skill of the Creator. I think that's understandable. We want to get to know very creative people. We want to know what makes them tick. And if God is the creator, then God is a source of creative inspiration. That makes God the greatest artist of all. The incredible wealth that we find in human hearts and minds wells up from that original divine spring. If there is a richness in persons, how much richer must be their source? That's what I think. I'm Dwight Nelson. Join us next time for more of The Evidence.